Now, let's get talking. Now, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria in its last meeting for the year voted to increase the benchmark interest rate by 100 basis points to 16.5%, its highest level since 2001. Leaving other parameters unchanged, the MPC during the meeting considered that the further tightening stance will help restore investors' confidence while curbing the rising rates of inflation. Now, address inflation rate rose 21.09%, in the month of October 2022 from 20.77% recorded in the previous month, an indication of further rise in the cost of goods and services. Despite the hawkish move by the CBN in the past six months, recall that the Apex Bank had increased the NPR from 11.5% earlier this year to 15.5% across three consecutive increases as money supply rose to its highest level at 50.5 trillion naira at the end of October 2022, an increase of 1.26 trillion naira from the previous month. Well, let's talk about this and make more sense of this resolution and, of course, what it means for the entire sector. I'm being joined via Zoom by an economic and investment analyst, Mr. Ayorinde Akinloye. Uh, Mr. Akinloye, thank you so much. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, yes, I know you, you've heard that the president has unveiled the new Naira notes. Uh, and for me, you know I'm a journalist. Uh, I want to always start with the hot, hot news. What is your reaction to this? Considering the fact that immediately the CBN raised this, uh, uh, brought up this idea, we saw that impact on the FX space, talking about the dollar to the Naira, where many said people were trying to mop up, trying to get off cash, cash off them and all of that. But in your thoughts, what is your reaction to what you've seen and what, uh, what do you think this means for us? Okay, well, um, basically, I think it's still, I think we, we discussed this um, extensively a couple of weeks back when the CBN announced the policy. And I think, again, it's just restating the fact that it's basically trying to balance the pros and the cons of taking this decision. Um, yes, looking at the new notes that were issued, we, you know, basically, I think, for me personally, I was expecting newly designed notes, you know, with brand new designs and, and, and stuff like that. But unfortunately, unfortunately, or, you know, maybe as a result of trying to manage the cost of redesigning the notes and things like that, um, the, the, the designs were not so much, there was not so much of a change in the look of the, the designs, just a bit of a color change, right? So, but in terms of the real economic impact, um, basically for me, I think the goal of the CBN is to drive the Nigerian economy more towards a cashless economy, such that all transactions, so that such that most of transactions done in Nigeria would be done, you know, you know, via transfers, mobile banking apps, um, trying to also promote e-naira and things like that. So because, um, and like I mentioned earlier, when the CBN announced the decision, I stated that it was going to be important for the for the CBN to follow up with additional policies that, you know, just simply. Um, issuing newly redesigned notes does not will not actually help solve the problem. There is a need to place a restriction on how much people can withdraw at counters, how much people can withdraw using their ATM cards, such that people will be forced to now do more cashless transactions than doing cash transactions. And as a result, that would help reduce the volume of money in circulation in terms of the volume of physical cash, not necessarily money supply, but the volume of physical cash circulating in the economy. And, you know, that would help preserve the legacy of the Naira. That would also help, you know, in terms of security issues regarding how um, the currency circulation is used, you know, and for the, some of the social evils they are used for. Now, the other hand is, you know, people is about what are the thoughts around the costs, how much will it cost us to, to issue these new notes, to print these new notes? The, the second thing is, you know, there is that clamor that there are more pressing economic issues to face, um, that why is the redesign of the Naira taking center stage at this point in time? But at the same time, you can see the benefits to say there are valid reasons to doing this. Then the last thing is also the negative impact on the FX markets. But we've actually seen that sort of reverse a bit as, as at about 11 o'clock or there are there about, about 12 noon today. I still confirmed, I think, you know, the exchange rate at the parallel market was roughly around 745, 750, depending on 
on who you're talking with today, um, depending on which dealer you're talking with. So we've seen it come down significantly from the 900 where we saw it gallop to at the start. So I think fairly on the balance of scale for me, I would say this is a fairly good move from, from the CBN, particularly from the aspect of being able to drive the economy to be towards being more cashless, you know, focusing on cashless transactions than, you know, transacting in physical cash and reducing all the hazards that are related to that. I'm also thinking that there could be some security features here when we talk of counterfeiting here because CBN is optimistic that that would stop. What do you make of that? And also the fact that this will be done every four to eight years or what, what exactly the CBN came up to say five to eight years uh, this will be done. Yes, that's, that's the global standard. Five to eight years is global standard to design um, the fiat currency for, any, for um, any economy based on prescribed standards, right? So, um, that's based on standards that have been described, globally accepted standards. So it's always, you know, better based on those standards to be designed five to eight years. So it's about, do we have the, the financial capacity to continue to redesign our, our currency every five years or every eight years? That's one thing that would need to be considered. The second thing is, yes, in terms of um, counterfeiting, I'm not, pre I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not so much of a, of a tech um, you know, printing experts, but I still struggle to see how difficult it would be um, for the CBN to say that these new notes will be difficult to counterfeit. Because, I mean, for example, if you check on social media already, you're already seeing, you know, people replicating the designs already, you know, particularly the 500 Naira notes, you know, there are people replicating the designs already on social media where you're seeing different um, forms of, of the, of the, note already. So I, I, I don't think we might, we, I don't think this would necessarily reduce um, counterfeiting. I think the only thing we, the only thing that can help is if the CBN has to um, redesign the currency notes every maybe five years, maybe that would play a role in at least reducing the amount of counterfeit um, currencies because it means whoever is printing new notes or counterfeiting new notes, by the time we look at the cost of reprinting every single time um, the CBN redesigns the currency, maybe that would be a deterrent. But in terms of issuing just those new notes and, you know, believing that that would reduce um, counterfeiting of the Naira, I struggle to see how that would play out because I still strongly believe that these new Naira notes that were, that were announced can be counterfeited easily. Mm, interesting stuff. Well, let's go back to uh, our MPC resolutions that have just concluded, MPC meeting, that's the November, and that's the last... Uh, for the year. Ayo, really, what were you expecting considering all of the contending issues? We can go on and on, but what were you expecting uh, at the end of that meeting? Yes, I think basically um, we cannot we cannot say you know what we believe is our preference or what, what what we think is the right thing to do or what what the MPC should have done yesterday. But definitely, the expectation was that they were going to raise the BM, the MPR again yesterday. You know, amidst all what is going on, you know, I mean, I'm sure we're going to we still have we still have further conversations around the reason why um, MPC took that decision and to the likely impacts and all. But um, basically for me, I was expecting a 50 basis point increase. Um, I think two members voted for that. Two members voted for a 50 basis point increase, but nine members voted for a 100 basis point increase. So yes, it was that it was expected that this, this, the MPC were going to consider raising the NPR. You know, the only other option was maybe to hold because they have already implemented about 400 basis points um, Ike this year. So the only other option was maybe they could have considered um, a hold stance, but easing the policy rate was never on the cards in this meeting, was never ever on the cards in this meeting. And if you listen to the CBN's, um, the CBN president's um, communique yesterday, he basically highlighted the fact that loosening was definitely not on the cards for them at yesterday's meeting. It was either a hold or, or a hike. And, you know, the hike was most, was, you know, the most likely outcome. And that was what we saw play out yesterday. Now, tightening, according to them, the tightening stance would help restore investors' uh, well sentiments uh, while also reigning in inflation. Uh, but do you think how many months? We've had 100, 150, about 400 basis points increase. When are we going to see the effect of this? Well, um, again, that's why I say um, everyone can have different school of thoughts on what they think, but basically... Unfortunately, I don't think that the interest rate hikes are actually having so much of an impact on inflation. Yes, the 
um, CBN, I mean, the MPC at yesterday's meeting, DMD, they stated that they believe that the rate hikes are actually having an effect in the sense that, you know, we've seen month-on-month um, -month deceleration in inflation. So if you look at month-on-month -month inflation, it's been decelerating for about two or three months now. And as a result, headline inflation has been increasing, but at a slower pace. So the pace of increasing in headline inflation has not been, that's year on year, has, has been reducing. And that's basically sort of signals that we are close to the peak. Now, the CBN is, or the MPC is, um, is accounting for that decline to be driven by the rate hikes that they've implemented earlier. But, you know, one, you, one can clearly say that even if the MPC did not implement any rate hike over the past few meetings, this is what would have still likely been playing out for inflation. We'd have likely seen inflation actually decline with or without the rate hikes from the from the MPC, from the uh, Management Policy Committee, because um, the, the benchmark policy rate is really a bit sort of not, is, is not as effective, right, on the, on the, on the economy anymore. So, um, in terms of in terms of what the what what has actually been driving the decline in inflation and if we would begin to see any impact from the monetary policy rate hikes that we've seen well again you look at the underlying drivers of inflation what are the core drivers right we have we've seen significant increase in food prices we've seen significant increase in energy costs and when we've seen a ripple effect of that on um, we've seen the ripple effect of that on other service-based um, products. So, for example, as a manufacturer, if my energy cost is going up, then I'm most likely going to raise the cost of selling my goods and services. So you're talking about alcoholic beverages, you're talking about electronics, you're talking about different things like that. Um, you're talking about, um, you know, service-based organizations like schools, educational institutions. All these organizations are going to raise their prices. You're going to see cost of utilities go up, cost of rents will go up. So. Those are the underlying drivers, and there's really limited impact. There's a, there's a limited room for interest rate hikes to have on those products. So clearly, we have more structural issues driving our inflation rates increase than just increasing or reducing interest rates. You know, unlike in the in more advanced economies where they are more of a credit-based economy, where people you know consume where, where consumption is driven by credit. Yes, in those kind of economies. Raising interest rates can help curb consumption, right? It can help reduce demand pressure and that thereby cause prices to reduce. But in Nigeria, a lot of our consumption are done are cash based. So there's little limit for what interest rate hikes can do. If you are going to curb inflation, if you are going to, you know, reduce the pressure, the price pressures we have seen, we need to look at the supply side for the Nigerian economy, not the demand side. We need to look at the supply side. We need to find a way to bring exchange rate down so that the cost of importing raw materials and importing finished goods will come down. We need to look at how we can improve power supply in order to reduce the cost of production for, um, for manufacturers, and that would reduce the price at which they sell goods and services to consumers. So these are the issues we need to look at. We need to look at the supply side, not the demand side, which is what interest rates are mainly effective for. Although, yes, interest rate hikes can be effective for the supply side by increasing interest rates to, you know, sort of reduce the ability of businesses to borrow money and to fund capital expenditure. But in the case of Nigeria, we don't want to do that. We don't want to hurt the supply side because if we hurt the supply side, we are going to significantly impact on our economic growth, which is not the goal of the CBN. The goal of the CBN is to combat inflation. But unfortunately, the interest rate hikes are not really doing enough to sort of combat that. Rather, we are seeing inflation being driven by other factors like the structural issues that I've mentioned, as well as um, prices and cost of doing um, business in the country. Uh, Ayo, Ayo, you've, uh, you've addressed uh, my next question. I, I, I would agree because I want to talk about the energy costs and all of these other issues which we face. Uh, logistics already queues are even back uh, now at field stations and all of this will impact inflation and growth, which is already uh, is gradual at the moment. Uh, I'm thinking of how we could achieve any form of inclusive growth in all of this uh, at the moment. But in your thoughts, uh, looking at the outlook projection, Russia and Ukraine crisis still on, and all of these issues that you've also identified, uh, what's your outlook for Nigeria? And do you think that we could address this inflationary pressure one way or the other, with all of these efforts being made by the Apex Bank in particular. Yes, I think I think beyond just the, the, the interest rate policy of the CBN, I think some other commendable policy actions that we can sort of speak to from the CBN are the, you know, so the, the, the efforts to sort of improve 
productivity in the agriculture and the manufacturing space. So we've seen, you know, the CBN continues to make windows available for key producers, particularly in the food sector, in the agricultural sector, and in the manufacturing. They've been providing windows for them to actually borrow money at close to single digit, single digit um, interest rate levels. Although, unfortunately, the, the percentage of manufacturers and economic participants that can access those windows, they are less than less than 10%, less than 5% of the overall economy. So fortunately, that is not having as much widespread effect on the overall economy. Now, in terms of moving forward, how do we, you know, sort of bring inflation under control and at the same time still continue to ensure that we continue on the path of growth? I think the, 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 the solutions are quite clear and obvious. First thing is we need to resolve those issues that naturally cause goods and services to be expensive in Nigeria. First thing, for example, is the issue of energy. If we resolve the issue of energy, what that does is for manufacturers, cost of cost of um, the energy costs that goes into the production of goods and services will be reduced significantly, right? And that would automatically give them headroom to reduce prices of their goods and services. We need to invest more in the agricultural sector. Like we always say, a significant percentage, about 70, 80% of our arable lands are not being cultivated as we are right as we speak at, at, um, at the moment. So if we begin to invest heavily in agriculture and, you know, talking about investing in agriculture, not just subsistence farming, not just giving a few farmers a um, hundred thousand naira and a few seedlings and fertilizers here and there. We're talking about large scale commercial farming, investing heavily in agriculture in order to boost food supply. That would significantly help reduce pressure on food prices, which constitutes about 52, more than 50 percent of um, the inflation basket. So that's one quick win we can we can look at. We need to improve our exports ability, our export productivity. So we need in terms of, you know, via agriculture, via, you know, our oil exports, via um, mining exports, we need to increase what we offer to the external community, that's the international community, so that we're able to earn more in FX. If we're able to earn more in FX, it, it, it improves FX liquidity within the economy, it reduces the pressure on the Naira, and as a result, when we want to import raw materials, when we have to, when we want to import finished goods for any finished good that we have to import, we'll be importing at a less expensive rate when we convert into to Naira, because if we continue to face persistent devaluation in the Naira, um, we would not be. We would continue to see inflation go up because we import quite a lot of raw materials and a lot of finished goods. Now, the CBM may say that oh, the decision to increase interest rates is to attract investors. You know, like we mentioned earlier, to improve investors' confidence. But fortunately, investors are not looking towards Nigeria right now because we have FX liquidity issues. You know, once beaten, twice shy. In fact, for the case of foreign investors, they've been beaten more than once. And until there is clear, there is a clear path towards resolving our FX issues, foreign investors will not come back into Nigeria, even if we take our MP to 20 percent until that fx risk is, is resolved foreign investors will not look at even if that is resolved today foreign investors will not look at the nigerian economy until after the election so there's a need for us to actually improve our fx our ability to earn fx beyond just fki inflows beyond just attracting foreign investors to bring in dollars to invest in our treasury bills and our bonds we need to have organic source of FX where we are selling agricultural produce to the, to the international community. We are selling gold, we are selling um, iron ore, we are selling steel, we are selling crude oil, we are selling all these products and we're able to win FX on a consistent basis, on an annual basis. And with that, we'll be able to reduce the pressure on FX, we'll be able to reduce the cost of importing goods and goods and even services for labor that we import, for specialized labor that we import. And all these factors will combine together to actually help bring inflation to a much more sustainable level. If we don't tackle these issues, increasing NPR by 100 basis points, 200 basis points will do nothing for us. Mm. Ayo, uh, real facts there, I must say. I agree with you. I've been speaking to economic and investment analyst there, Ayo Rinde Akinoye. Thank you so much. You really made sense uh, of this topic of discourse. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.